Hey guys, Lysane here, and for a very, very, very long time, people have been afraid of the dark. And it makes sense, because anything could be lurking in the dark. A monster, some bad guy, something that could make you trip over. Who knows? And because of this fear of the unknown, a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows and even haunted houses and all that kinds of stuff prey upon this fear, including a movie that is dedicated to just the darkness itself. So today, I'm going to be looking at a movie called Pitch Black and seeing if it's worth it. Pitch Black was released in the year 2000, and we start our adventure on board a spaceship that is transporting a ship full of passengers with both good people and criminals. They run into a little bit of trouble as they pass through an asteroid field which tears up the ship and they crash land on a mysterious planet. The captain dies and so do a lot of the passengers, but some do make it out and explore the island. They are led by the most senior person left alive on the ship, Carolyn Fry, played by Raider Mitchell, who you might recognize from Silent Hill, which I also done a review on, you should totally check that out. With their exploration, they discover a research station here, abandoned, and due to the multiple suns, it is forever daytime, so sunburn galore here! Trying to figure out what's going on, strange things start happening, including one of the children being attacked by strange creatures. Something is seriously wrong with this planet. What doesn't help is that one of the survivors is Riddick, played by Vin Diesel, who was an unknown actor at the time. He is a killer and general bad guy. He was captured and being brought to prison for all of his heinous crimes. That makes him a skilled fighter, relentless, and he has a unique skill. He had his eyes altered so he can see in the dark, which I'm sure will probably come in handy seeing as how the movie's called Pitch Black. The crew have to pull together in order to fix their ship and get off the planet before they too disappear. But what could have caused it? I'm sure it has something to do with the title of the movie, right? And what kind of pitch is black anyway? Like, why, why would you have a black? Pitch Black is an action movie with a high emphasis on suspense and atmosphere. And because of this, this movie has a very distinct split in it where I feel like it's sort of two movies. So let's talk about the first part, which is in the daytime. During this time, we spend the majority of it to learn about the characters and the world that we're on. Both of the little mysteries and what everyone's backstories are and all that kinds of stuff, including our main guy, Riddick, who is not really a main character in the first half of the film. He barely even has any lines. But you do learn about the other characters and why that you should care about them. But you do know that this is a monster film, so some of the characters won't survive until the end, and they only give you this false sense of caring, so when they do die, you actually care about them. It's done a little bit better than most sort of like horror tropey movies where they actually spend more time building these characters. They're not just lambs for a slaughter, which is better than other movies, but they're still kind of shallow. But the first half really gets across the dire situation and the relentless heat of the sun bearing down on them, and it drops enough information for you to know what is going on before the second half of the film. It also cuts to Riddick every now and then, as he is essentially trolling the rest of the group, which I find hilarious. Despite the stories, he isn't really a monster. He has some kind of humor and honor to him. That doesn't make him any less deadly, however, because you spend the first half being afraid of him because he is a threat and he doesn't really do anything though. The first half feels more like a thriller than a monster film, but everything changes once the sun goes down. So it turns out that once every 22 years, a solar eclipse happens and the world is bathed in darkness. And because of this, all the creatures that live underground in the darkness come out and play. Well, by play I mean eat each other and fight and try and eat our heroes and all that kind of junk. It's just like really, really crazy. As soon as that sun goes down, the tone of the film drastically changes. It is no longer so much about atmosphere and slow world building. Now it's more of an action movie with a lot of suspense because our heroes are now in real danger. What the characters have to do is not even that alarming. The ship is fairly fixed. They just have to get the last little bits over from the recent station to the ship, but it's one trip at night time in the dark with all of these vicious, vicious creatures out there. And they are absolutely crazy. They fight and they're attacking each other, they're attacking the heroes, they're just absolutely animalistic, they're so primal. 
And of course, this is where Riddick comes back and he becomes a member of the group, so to speak. Because he can see in the dark because of that um, MacGuffin things on his eyes, he is an invaluable member and he too wants to survive. He doesn't want these other people to die, but he doesn't either care uh, too much if they live. He's sort of nice, but not really, and that's kind of his whole shtick in the film. Um, so because of this, he is now the navigator of sorts, and they have to trust him, and he has to put some trust into them. This doesn't make the film any less intense, because there is still that deep rivalry between him and the other characters, and it's fun to see, now that they're in this enclosed space, because they can't go too far away from each other, how they all deal with all of this tension. So even with all of these monsters that will kill you without a moment's notice, people still fight and bicker, and it baffles me because it causes so many problems. You think they'd get along for survival, but some people are just stupid. It also turns out that light hurts these creatures and burns their skin, so it makes sense that they're underground all this time. So as long as you have some light, you'll be fine, right? But the lights go out because everything was solar powered, which makes sense. 22 years of this planet's life cycle, it's all sun. So of course, solar power would be a good idea. So some serious problems start happening. It's all very intense, especially when they are trying to travel at night. Honestly, the second half of the film is much more exciting than the first half, and some people have a preference for which part of the film they enjoy more. The build-up and suspense, or the intense horror monster sections. The movie also doesn't look too exciting either, because they're on this hot desert planet. Most of it is just brown, oranges, and yellows. You do get the sense of heat and the sense of desolation there, which is great, but there's also not really much to see. In the research stations, there's a little bit more color with grey, which uh, probably isn't really a colour, is it a colour? Doesn't matter. But the whole first half of the film is a bit drab and boring. Then the second half of the film is at night, so you don't even get much depth perception. Most of the time you're focusing on whatever the light source illuminates, which has just like this black aura around it most of the time, which does create some good lighting effects and some interesting scenes, but for the most part, again, it just looks kind of boring. The CGI for the monsters is a little bit hit and miss. It was made 18 years ago, so for the time it was pretty decent. Some of the effects hold up today, some of the effects are even practical, which I always love. For the most part though, you can tell they're fake, but it still doesn't stop you from enjoying the film. You just know that, yeah, Vin Diesel's not really fighting monsters, but of course he wouldn't. That may, would make no sense anyway. Because of this, I feel like the characters are what drives this movie. Even though they're pretty stock standard and they don't have too much character development or growth, aside from maybe Riddick, the rest of the characters do enough for you that you do care about them, you do sort of want them to live or get them to the end or want some of them to die because they're assholes. And Riddick, of course, is the standout star here. Originally, he was only supposed to be um, a, a main character, but then he got pushed to the absolute stardom from this film. This pretty much kicked off Vin Diesel's entire career, and it made a whole franchise out of the character Riddick. It's absolutely crazy. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. This movie is strange. It has pacing issues with lots of slow points in the whole film and characters that aren't too deep or interesting for the most part, but I can't help but find it compelling. Maybe it's due to Riddick or perhaps how the world is set up and then executed. Maybe it's the monsters and how they act and how crazy they are. I'm not really sure. I do like the design of the monsters though, they do look pretty cool and interesting and they also have this unique blind spot as well which is pretty cool and the gore in the film is done fairly well. When the creatures fight they almost feel like they could be real creatures even though their society doesn't make any sense. So here's some questions eh? <laughs> Why are there so many creatures? What the hell do they eat the other 22 years before the sun goes down? Do they fight each other down there? Do they eat each other? It's implied that they probably eat each other when they can't find food on the surface, so is that what they do down below? And if that's the case, then that means they wouldn't have such a high population. And because there wouldn't be a high population, then of course they wouldn't be able to come out in swarms that we see in the movie. It all doesn't make sense, but it's not really important, but it just, you know, keeps me up at night. 
In my opinion, I think that Pitch Black is actually worth it. It's a pretty fun film with very two distinct parts to it. The building of suspense and mystery and atmosphere in the first half, and then the execution of it all with some monsters and some fun action. Because of this, the, you know, the midpoint when the sun goes down is really, really jarring. It's like going from this uh, bright, sunny movie to this dark movie, but it also works sort of in the movie's favor. Like, everything has changed now because the sun is down. Um, the acting as well is fairly competent, uh, especially Vin Diesel and uh, Raider Mitchell. They're the standout people in this. Uh, not everybody is really good, but they, they're you know, fodder for the monsters. That's what the thing is all about. Um, it's not the best movie either. There are better movies with this idea in mind, but I don't think that any of them have done like this one. So I recommend checking it out. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. So... I think it's worth it. So guys, tell me what you thought about Pitch Black. It's not a movie about singing, sadly, so oh, that's a bit of a shame. Can you imagine Vin Diesel going out and singing a cappella style? That would have been amazing. That would have made for a much better movie, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I, I really enjoy the fact that this this movie created a whole franchise based around one character uh, because he was pretty interesting in this film. Um, but... I'll get to all of those things, those games, those movies one day in the future. Until then, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Fun fact, I wrote this episode over a year ago, but then just kept pushing it back to do other episodes, but finally getting around to it. Hey guys, Lightane here, and for a very, very long time, people have been afraid of the dark. Burp. But not afraid of the burps.